so the next heterocyclic compound is nothing but acridine so what do you see in acridine the structure there are two benzene ring and in between there is a pyridine okay it's similar to your anthracene but only thing your central ring contains your nitrogen your carbon hydrogen is replaced by your nitrogen the middle ring your carbon and hydrogen is replaced by your nitrogen okay they are related to pyridine quinoline and so they are slightly basic in nature iupac name is acridic systemic iupac name is dibenzo b e pyridine why because at that b phase and e phase of your pyridine your benzene is fused that's why it is called as dibenzo b e pyridine other name as 2,3 benzoquinone chemical properties uh, formula is C13H9N molecular mass weight is equal to 179 appearance white solid irritating and melting point is around 106 to 110 if you see the numbering let's go by the numbering 1 2 3 4 and okay followed by 6 7 8 in the two benzene rings are given first then 9 10 so this is the numbering remember the numbering of acridine 1 2 3 4 to the benzene ring uh, 5 6 7 8 to the next benzene ring and 9 10 and the 10th one is nitrogen so in the, the numbering is slightly different okay remember this very okay so how they are synthesized now let's go for the synthesis okay first is Dunstan's acridine synthesis what is this you take diphenyl amine Okay, take a diphenyl amine that is two phenyl groups attached to your amino groups okay that you it is condensed with carboxylic acid you basically you take formic acid if you want to clean and if you want a substituted acridine you take any acid carboxylic acid basically formic acid is taken you heat it with presence of zinc chloride which acts as an Lewis acid so basically it is an acylation type of Fidelkopf's acylation type of reaction so you take a diphenyl amine treated with carboxylic acid in presence of zinc chloride okay you get your corresponding acridine that's the first method for the synthesis of acridine now let's go for the second diphenyl amine you treat it with aluminium chloride in presence of chloroform Fidelkopf acylation alkylation you get your acridine so you take diphenylamine with chloroform you treat it in presence of your aluminium chloride you get your acridine third is acridone the acridone means there is a carbonyl group at the ninth position you reduce it in presence of zinc dust okay in presence of zinc dust you get your acridine okay. okay now next method next step you treat ortho aniline phenyl ortho aniline diphenyl methane means your two aniline group uh, aniline group is linked by a is linked by a methylenic group you heat it it red hot tube okay you it undergoes cyclization to give your acridine the next last method is fifth method is you by heating salicyl aldehyde okay by heating salicyl aldehyde okay with uh, zinc uh, with aniline so aniline and salicyl aldehyde then you fuse it using zinc chloride that is high temperature you get your acridine so salicyl aldehyde and an, uh, aniline you fuse it it undergoes condensation to give you your acridine so these are the five methods for the synthesis of your and the last is your Ullmann's method what is Ullmann basically it is a linking so you take an anthranilic acid or an aryl halide okay or an ortho halobenzoic acid along with aniline you just you can interchange it it is nothing but 
a reaction between your amine and your chloride or an halogen compound and followed by your condensation with your carboxylic acid so which forms an acridone okay so first step is your uh, reaction between amine and chloride followed by cyclization when you heat it at high temperature it forms acridone and acridone on reduction gives you your acridine which further on oxidation that is removal of your hydrogen gives you your acridine so this is your Ullmann synthesis this is your Ullmann synthesis of your acridine those are there, there are total six methods for synthesis of your this is basically a condensation reaction between an amine and a carboxylic acid it undergoes condensation at high temperature in presence of an acid so this is these are the various methods for the synthesis of your acridine now let's go for the reaction now let's go for the reaction so at which positions now it will undergo your uh, electrophilic substitution reaction it was found that the acridine undergoes electrophilic substitution reaction at the second and the seventh position on the two rings on the two benzene rings the reduction uh, sorry electrophilic substitution reaction takes place you get 27 dinitro acridine reduction so let us go for the reduction so if you want to see when you use zinc HCl okay when you use zinc HCl no no when you use ferric chloride your acridine gets converted into 910 dihydroacridine and when you treat it with your platinum hydrogen and platinum okay you get 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 octa hydroacridine your benzene rings gets reduced when you treat it with your platinum and hydrogen gas okay so reduction of acridine with zinc and hcl okay results in formation of uh, formation of pyridine in acridine with giving 9 10 dihydropyridine whereas reduction with Platinum and hydrogen reduction gives your reduction of your benzene ring of your oxidation. So when you oxidize with sodium chromate, okay, when you oxidize with sodium chromate, you get your 10H acridone. That is 10H acrid 9 ohm. So you get an carboxylation. Carbonyl group gets introduced at the ninth position. And when the same reaction, when you do it in alkaline KMnO4 you get your 2 3 dicarboxylic acid so see the condition in acidic condition so the potassium sodium chromate you get your carb acridone whereas in basic condition your benzo benzene ring gets uh, converted into your quinoline 2 3 dicarboxylic acid so this is your oxidation product of your acridine now reaction with your nucleophile okay when you treat it with sodium hydride in presence of NN dimethyl aniline okay when you treat it with sodium hydride in presence of NN dimethyl you get an you get an bicyclic compound okay fused by uh, you get a bicyclic whereas when you treat it with liquid ammonia okay when you treat it with liquid ammonia you get an 9 amino acridine so depending upon the reagents you will get different products you get a biacridyl compound when you treat it with nn dimethyl aniline and when you treat it with liquid ammonia and sodium sodamide you get your 9 amino acridine so this is your nucleophilic additions reaction that takes place in case of your acridine so what happens when similarly it will also react with your alkyl halide because it acts as a pyridine so it will form quaternary ammonium salt and this quaternary ammonium salt which is from acridium iodate which is which further on treated with potassium ferricinate yields yields n methyl acridone which gives n because it undergoes uh, your oxidation followed by methyl so it the dearomatization takes place you get your n methyl acridone at the ninth position your carbonyl compound gets introduced and you get your n methyl acridone so if you want to prepare, prepare a methylated acridone first you have to alkylate it using methyl iodide then treat that quaternary ammonium salt with your fer potassium ferricinate and 
you get your an alkyl acridone any alkyl acridone you have to prepare you can prepare by this method this is a method for preparation of an alkyl acridone okay so uses in the production of uh, it, it can be used as an antiseptic that is profiling that is three and seven three seven diamino acridin that is profiling that is used as an antiseptic and also it is used in the people of mecarpin that is your ninth uh, ninth position here it has an a nine amino loop which is connected to an uh, which which contains an uh, ethylene uh, which contains an amino group diamino group substituted diamino group okay that is mepacrine okay but that is mepa cream so these are the uses of acridin these are the uses of acridin so this were all the groups of your acrid. now let's go for the next compound next go for the next compound okay reagents Now the next reagent is pyrazole. The next reagent is pyrazole. What is this pyrazole? Pyrazole, if you see, it is a five-membered ring. And till now we were only studying one heteroatom. Till now we were just studying one heteroatom. Now there are two heteroatoms in the ring. There are two heteroatoms in the ring. We start with, we start with what? Pyrazole. So in this case of pyrazole, your nitrogen is at 1, 2 position. At the first and the second position, it contains a nitrogen ring. Okay? It's a five-membered carbon, a uh, five-membered heterocycle containing two heteroatoms, that is two nitrogens at 1 and 2 position. It's a five-membered heterocyclic compound containing three carbons and two adjacent nitrogen at one and two position. So that is pyrazole, formula C3H3N2H, okay, one saturated and one unsaturated nitrogen. So your preference will be given to your saturated nitrogen. So that NH will be given, the first preference, the naming will be starting from NH, okay, C3H4N2 molecular mass 80 uh, 68 melting point 66 to 70 boiling point 186 basicity yeah, it is basic in nature it's known as 1 2 diazole azole means diazole means it is two nitrate and ole means it is a five member ring so containing a five member ring containing two nitrogens at 1 2 position that's why it is known as 1 2 dia Zone. That's why it is known as 1 2 diazole. So they are uh, uh, present in silicoxib, that is an analgesic, in various other psychoanalytic, anti convulsant, monoamide oxidase inhibitors, anti diabetic, antifungal, antibacterial active. They are present all over. Anti arrhythmic, all the drugs contain this ring, okay, heterocyclic ring. So it was first, uh, the first naturally accreditating uh, pyrazole discovered was one pyrazole and al alanine, which is isolated from your watermelon seeds. So the first uh, naturally uh, occurring uh, uh, pyrazole which was discovered was one pyrazolyl aniline. So it forms an carbonyl amide bond with your alanine. Alanine is nothing but an amino acid. Okay, that was the first natural pyrazole so let's go for the aromaticity what do you mean by aromaticity it should have it should be planar it should be sp2 hybridized conjugated okay and the unhybridized p orbital should be on the should be perpendicular to the plane of your uh, sigma bond 
the p orbitals should be overlapping yeah between the two adjacent p orbitals should be and the total number of non bonding electrons is 6 3 comes from your carbon and 1 from nitrogen and 2 from your 2 from your second nitrogen 1 from your saturated and other 2 coming from your unsaturated nitrogen so this is how it this is how its Huckel's rule is maintained. This is how the six electrons for the Huckel's rule is obtained. Okay, so this is why pyrrole is aromatic. This is why pyrrole is at it is planar conjugated. The p orbitals are overlapping. The p orbitals are perpendicular to the plane of your uh, sigma bonds. Okay. And it has got six electrons, three coming from carbon, one coming from nitrogen, and two coming from the lone pair of electrons of your second nitrogen. So this are the this are the structures. Uh, this is the reason for the aromaticity of your pyrazo. Okay. Now let's go for the tautomerism. Now why this tautomerism is seen? Why this tautomerism is seen? Now, if you see the structure, there are two nitrogens which are adjacent to it. Now, the methyl is in, in the, in one time, it is in the fifth position. Now, what happens in the sex, uh, second, second case, is case, your nitro hydrogen from your first carbon goes to the second carbon. The moment it goes from the first carbon to the uh, first nitrogen to the second nitrogen, the position of methyl becomes 5. Okay. The position of methyl becomes 5. Okay, why? Because nitrogen NH gets your first ring, gets your first preference, then nitrogen double bond, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's why this hydrogen, there is a rapid migration of your hydrogen from one nitrogen to the another. So that's why <coughs> you can get two forms. One is at depending upon the uh, substitution. So 3 methyl period uh, pyrazole can also be as a 5 methyl pyrazine depending upon its resonance of the presence of hydrogen on which nitrogen you can get two resonance form. Similarly, it can form uh, hydrogen bonding because of the lone pair of electron, two nitrogen, so one of the nitrogen, so they will be intramolecular, so they will be intramolecular, <coughs> they act as a cyclic dimer because one nitrogen, so if you can see, there is they can share the hydrogen bonding between each other so that's why it has got high boiling point because of this cyclic dimers that are formed pyrosols have high boiling point now let's go for the synthesis now let's go for the synthesis as you have seen pyridine is susceptible to pyrimidine is susceptible to nucleophilic addition reaction it reacts with hot hydrazine solution to give Pyrazol. So, what happens when you treat it with an uh, when you treat pyridine with your hydrazine? Okay, it will undergo <coughs> breakage of ring and you get your pyrazol. So, that is the first method for the synthesis of pyrazol. What is this? Pyrimidine, when you heat it with aqueous hydrazine, it will undergo ring <coughs> shortening. Okay and you get your pyrazole one of the ch2 ch uh, carbon in your pyrimidine gets removed and you get your pyrazole second method is nor pyrazole synthesis what is this nor pyrazole synthesis you take a 1 3 dicarbonyl compound you take a 1 3 or a beta dicarbonyl derivative anything can be written so it's 1 3 and beta dicarbonyl derivatives are same okay 1 3 dicarbonyl compound you treat it with an hydrazine hydrazine contains two nitrogen which are adjacent to each other when you treat it with that it undergoes condensation in presence of acid to give you your pyrazole this is a common method nucleophilic addition water oh again both oh oh water is removed and you get your Pyrazole. It is an acid catalyzed method. Mechanism is nothing but a nucleophilic attack of your amino group on your carbonyl carbon to form OHOH, OH, which undergoes dehydration to give you a pyrazole. 
that is your second method this is the same thing you can get different products depending upon that okay you can get different substituted pyrazole using this particular method taking different uh, diketo uh, uh, one three dicar different dicarbonyl compounds you can take different hydrazines you can take and you can prepare different derivatives okay you can prepare different derivatives of your pyra so depending upon your hydrazine and your uh, diketo compound one three dicarbonyl compounds you can prepare n number of pyrazoles okay next is nitrile imines what is this nitrile imines when you treat it is known as dipolar cycle between an alkynes alkyne means carbon carbon triple bonds that you treat it with nitrile what is it? nitrile cn nitrogen with an extra nit uh, n okay imine so when you treat with an uh, acetyl alkynes with an nitrile amine it undergoes dipolar cyclo addition so one nitrogen comes over here hydrogen nitrogen attacks on the acetylene because it is highly acidic then uh, that shifts to this and nitrogen gets back to this so it is known as dipolar cyclo cyclo addition okay dipolar cyclo addition occurs when an acid alkyne reacts with nitrile amines nitrile amines means it, it has got a it is uh, your amino group is attached to your cyano group that is known as nitrile um, imines okay so that is one to dipolar cyclo addition that is reaction of your nitrile imines with your acetylene to give your substituted pyrazole this is the same reaction how it occurs it can occurs in uh, any uh, electron withdrawing that sign or any other electron withdrawing group also can be present okay so it will undergo a uh, uh, cyclo addition ethyl diazoacetate anything diazomethane anything can be used for this type of reactions okay only thing it should have electron withdrawing group in presence of an acetyl so these are some of the examples of that reaction now let's go for the reaction of pyrazole electrophilic addition reaction occurs in the nitrogen yes because of the lone pair of electrons it will form an pyrazolium cation now see since there are two since there are two nitrogen let's see an alkylation what happens you treat it with this thing you get an n methyl pyrazolinium salt okay again you know there is an tautomerism okay again there is an tautomer acts as a base pyrazole acts as a base it removes the proton from your pyrazole and you get an n1 n2 dimethyl pyrazolinium salt okay so if you have a base because pyrazole acts and it will remove the proton and you get n1 n2 dimethyl pyrazolinium salt quaternary ammonium salt so di substituted alkyl substituted pyrazoles we will get when you treat it with an alkyl halide so remember this is the difference first is your normal quaternary ammonium salt now once this act uh, this becomes activated and since your pyrazole is basic in nature it will abstract the proton from your nitrogen and it undergoes the second alkylation so an alkylation so you get n1 n2 dimethyl pyrazolinium salt okay so that is your electrophilic addition reaction remember this thing two nitrogen means it will form di derivative now the electrophilic substitution okay now the electro so at so if you see at c3 c4 and c5 if you see c3 c4 and c5 at c3 and c5 if the reaction takes place at c3 and c5 you see moment the addition takes place at c3 and c5 immediately the nitrogen gets positive charge immediately the nitrogen gets positive charge okay okay and it is shared between the two nitrogens but when the addition takes place at the c4 position only one of your nitrogen is getting positive charge so this is slightly more stable than that your of your c3 and c4 why so that's the reason why addition to your carbon 
nitrogens, the reactions will give you an unstable intermediate because the positive charge will be on the two and we have seen when you are studying indole and all. Whenever the positive charge and pyridine, whenever the positive charge comes on the nitrogen, the structure is unstable because the electrons are reduced in the octet. That's why it is unstable. Electrons are removed from its octet to sta stabilize the ring. That's why if the positive charge comes on the nitrogen, the structure is unstable. Okay, that's the reason why the substitution reaction, electrophilic substitution reaction is more favorable in case of C4 rather than C3 and C5 because in C3 and C5 both the nitrogens get positive charge whereas in case of C4 only one of the nitrogen gets when you write the resonance structures only one of the nitrogen gets positive charge which is more favorable compared to that of C3 and C5. That's the reason why pyrazole undergoes electrophilic substitution reaction at C4. Four. So, electrophilic substitution reaction in case of pyrazole undertakes at the C4 position. <coughs> so, why? The electrophilic attack as it generates highly unstable positively charged azomethyl ion. Azomethan ion. Okay? Electrophilic attack without any such highly unstable. So, as I said, there, there is no such azomethan uh, uh, formation in this case. So that is the reason why the attack takes place at C4 rather than at C3, C5. Electrophilic attack takes place readily at neutral and an alkaline as pyrazole gets protonated and it is more resistant to electrophilic attack. So the reaction will take place only in your neutral and alkaline, not at your acidic medium because acidic medium it gets protonated and it is unstable. So that is why the reaction takes place only in neutral or basic. Remember this thing. The electrophilic substitution reaction takes place in neutral or alkaline, not in acidic medium. Because an acidic medium it gets protonated and it gets deactivated. Okay. So your electrophilic substitution reaction takes place only in the neutral and alkaline medium. So nitration it should be substituted okay your benzene should be substituted and it requires the nitration will be at the fourth iodination or halogenation will be taking place at your fourth position okay though it is in acidic but uh, your benzene will be substituted with an electron withdrawing uh, electron donating group so that it will increase the electron density and favor P plain pyrazole usually does not undergo but substituted pyrazoles go undergo your electrophilic substitution at the fourth position okay oxidation so see if you see all these things nitrogen is substituted with an electron donating group so that will increase the electron oh. density okay so in alkaline kmna4 when you heat so it uh, it should be a methylated okay with an electron donating group it gets carboxylate so normally that does not undergo oxidation Reduction with palladium hydrogen. See all the things. It should. It is an substituted pyrazole. It is a substituted pyrazole which undergoes reaction. Okay. So you get one phenyl four five dihydropyrazole. And further, if you treat, then only you get one phenyl pyrazolidine. So you just see only a substituted pyrazoles undergo your most of the reaction because they are not that reactive because it will give an unstable product so only a substituted that also with an electron donating group with the nitrogen that will undergo your different types of reaction ring opening okay with sodium hydride again sodium hydride abstracts the proton next to your nitrogen this is followed by a cyanogen uh, cyano product as acrylonitrile derivative acrylonitrile loss of your hydrogen Okay, and you get a acrylonitrile derivative. So now hydrogen is lost. Okay, and you get an acrylonitrile derivative. It is a ring opening reaction. So medicinal use it is antipyrine. Antipyrine is used as analgesics. 
phenylbutazone it is used as an anti inflammatory agent so please remember one or two of your compounds which are used for the preparation of your tyrosine okay any two compounds you have to remember which are simple to be remembered and if you see most of the time your nitrogens are substituted with an electron donating group okay which are substituted by an to favor the reactions okay if you see in all this uh, reaction your nitrogens are substituted to favor the reaction so phenylbutazone is easy to remember it's an hydrogen ring with the diphenyl substituted and and a butyl ring so phenylbutazone that means a butyl ring which is substituted to an hydrogen okay ring okay so that's your examples medicinal uses medicinal uses of pyrazone that's a medicinal uses of pyrazone